welcome to another video on Astrobooks World. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you've never seen this channel before, please click that big red subscribe button, or you can click both. That'd make me very happy. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about a few things to consider when looking to buy a Bluetooth speaker, or any other speaker for that matter. So first of all, most important one of course, is price. How much are you willing to spend? In my collection, the prices range from £25 to £250, so it's quite a big range there. So set yourself a budget and only look at speakers in that range. So set yourself a budget and stick to it. Don't then go and look at a speaker that's way above your budget, because obviously you'll then maybe like that speaker and know you can't afford it. Next thing to consider is where are you going to use it? It's very important to ensure you buy a speaker that is going to be suited to where you'll use it. And think about the size of room. If you've got a small room, you're not going to need a big speaker. Big spe big room, sorry, you're going to need a bigger speaker. Fairly straightforward. Think about the environment. So you're going to use it inside or outside. If you're using it inside, you don't really need to worry about water resistance, stuff like that. If you're using it outside, especially in England, if anyone knows what the British weather's like, it can go from sunny to rainy quite quickly. So you may want to look at something that's maybe fully waterproof or splash proof. So are you going to be using it in a quiet place or noisy place? Same thing really, you're going to need something more powerful for a noisy place than you are in a quiet place. So these are all things to consider when buying. So next one is features. So Bluetooth speakers nowadays can range from a simple speaker with a on off button and a Bluetooth pairing button to one that has NFC pairing, charge output, built in speakerphone, the list goes on. Next one is how loud does it need to go? Now this is often overlooked because many people think, oh yeah, I can buy this one, it'll sound great, even at full power. Not necessarily. If you've seen any of my demo videos, you'll hear me say how I very, very rarely push a speaker beyond 75% of its total capacity. Now the reason for that is most speakers will have either DSP or nothing at all. So DSP, digital signal processing, for you people that don't know, will normally either limit the volume or limit the bass at close to full volume or at full power, which can result in obviously not very good audio quality. And the ones that haven't got DSP will maybe start to distort, which will sound horrible for one and two, it's probably going to damage your speaker in the long run as well. So it's always good to get something that's maybe bigger or has plenty of power or more power than you need. Fifth and final point is try it before you buy. This is the most important thing to do before you purchase because yeah, you could see one online and think that's brilliant, you know, it looks really good, but you're going by looks alone. So you could get that speaker home, turn it in, turn it on, plug it in, whatever you need to do and you think, hmm, it doesn't actually sound as good as I thought it would. So the best thing to do, which is what I do, is go into your local electrical store if you have one, and they normally have a selection of speakers on display, and just have a mess around with them. Don't be scared to crank them up, play a few different songs on them. No good retailer should stop you from doing this. If you can't get to a store, look on YouTube. That's what I've done for most of my speakers, and I'll put the links down below of my demonstration and reviews of the speakers here. So you can have a look that way. At least it's not a first hand like listen, but it is a listen rather than just going by looks alone. So there you have it guys. I hope this has helped some people that are maybe a bit confused as to the whole features and what you need and what you don't need on Bluetooth speakers. A lot of the time it comes down to personal preference. I mean mine, a lot of the time I use mine every night pretty much to 75% of their capacity, so I need something that's quite loud. Me personally, I use a combination of either the Extreme and the Flip 3, the Extreme and the Charge 3 linked together using JBL Connect. That's what I use personally, but it's personal preference at the end of the day. So I hope this helped you guys. If you'd like to know anything else or want to ask me anything, let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon.